Well, this looks like as good a time as any to step over some dangerous uh, places. And hi, how are you? Welcome once again to the Mask Fan Attic, where all you Halloween enthusiasts and horror hounds and monster fans can uh, can uh, share in the joy of old classic, uh, maybe forgotten Halloween masks, ones that you won't find at your local discount store or your local. Uh, you know, uh, Halloween dump or whatever they call uh, the big stores in the shopping centers. You may not find them there, but you may find them on eBay or other online sources or from privately owned costume and mask dealers or from collectors who have gone broke and have to sell their collections uh, for food. Uh, look what I have found for you this week. It is none other than a Distortions Unlimited Singenor. That's right, Singenor. That's S-Y-N-G-E-N-O-R stands for, well I shouldn't say stands for, it's not exactly an acronym, it's sort of a compound uh, combined word, not exactly an acronym because then it would have, if it was an acronym, if it stood for something, then there would have to be something for each of those letters. And actually it just means synthesized genetic organism. That's right. And the Singenor, created by Bill Malone, a, a mask fan legend if ever there was one, created by Bill Malone for his movie from 1980. Uh, came out in 81, I believe, scared to death. Now, uh, the Singenor, as you can probably tell, influenced by uh, the work of H.R. Giger for Alien, and at that time, a lot of sci-fi movies had monsters and aliens that looked like the alien, and the majority of them kind of just looked like somebody ripped off the alien, and they just had that uh, the big black banana head and the teeth, and yeah, you know, but the Singenor was one that while it could be said that it was influenced by the look of Alien, uh, it was one that really had personality and was really memorable and stood out as a unique creation uh, rather than uh, just a knockoff. So, um, Singenor, always popular with collectors. Now, in addition to the 1980 uh, movie Scared to Death, there was a pretty lousy sequel in 1990 called simply Singenor. Uh, but the continuity wasn't very good and the monster wasn't explained quite the same way and yeah, the first one's better. That's, isn't that always the case though? Now, this mask had been made available, or this character rather, had been made available pre previously through Don Post Studios. Theirs was an original sculpture from Don Post Studios. It was a little smaller than this one. It had a foam-filled uh, cranium up here. And, uh, well, the post one was in production first. Uh, this one didn't come out until, uh, I believe, 1987, 88, and 89 is when the Distortion Singenor was in production. And uh, while the, the Don Post version, uh, I would have to say, had the better paint job, it had a lot more detail uh, on the paint, um, the paint work going on than the Distortions. The Distortions overall, uh, I think, is the better mask because it's from the original molds. How cool is that, monster fans? Uh, now again, the Don Post version was, was beautifully painted. The Distortions one, not as detailed. This one, you're saying, how? why is he complaining about the paint job? That's pretty detailed. Well, this one's been retouched by a mask artist, so it has more detail than, um, than they did coming from Distortions, but they were still pretty sweet masks and like the Don Post version the Distortions one also had a little foam here in the top so that if you wanted to wear it it would hold its shape. Uh, this particular one has been foam filled which is uh, good because it gives me an excuse not to have to put it on my head for you right now. Uh, but um, which otherwise I should and like pretty up you know but another way you can identify this as a Distortions version besides the fact it's larger and it's a slightly different sculpture because it wasn't re-sculpted like the Don Post one it's got that Distortions teeth thing going on where the teeth look awesome from the front but they're all packed in with clay going straight back to make it easier to uh, unmold easier to pull the castings out of molds uh, which which throws off the look at anybody, if anybody's really paying attention to the teeth and looking at the thing from the side. Looks awesome from the front though. Uh, now, the Singenor in addition to, he's had a long history in, in masks, old Singenor. Uh, not up there with Michael Myers or Frankenstein or Darth Vader yet, but he's getting there. Because first there was the Don Post version in the early 80s, then there was the Distortions version, which this is, did I mention that? From the late 80s, uh, then there's uh, probably my favorite one of all time, which I don't have one here, 
was one from a Japanese company called Daimos and theirs also was adapted from original molds and had uh, extras like plastic uh, teeth and eyes and oh and you see this toenail right here okay the toenail on the top of the head on the Dodd Post one it was painted black but on the distortions one it was usually either just uh, light brown or just exposed uh, raw latex uh, color which was also be basically would be light brown or kind of a beigey looking color and uh, take a good look at that the only monster that ever reminded me of Pat Benatar a little bit just something about the can you see it remember her the 80s the spandex and the yeah, never mind. You don't see the resemblance. But, uh, okay. And then, way back in the year 2012, that's 2012, uh, Trick or Treat Studios also came out with a version, and theirs was also uh, from the original molds. And, um, uh, well, it's very similar to the Distortions one. But, uh, oh, I almost forgot one. I did forget it. But I'm going to go back and mention it now. The late, great Jack Nisi. Uh, was impressed by this character too and he sculpted a very similar uh, creature his was a little different he just proportioned the face a little differently made the eyes a little bigger and a little more bugged out and his was called deadly commander now the Don post and distortions and dimos and uh, trick-or-treat versions all had paint jobs of gray and brown and black um, sometimes with some silver uh, a silver haze over parts of it, uh, sometimes not. But Jack Nisi painted his in, in rather more uh, fanciful colors. He did his uh, usually in sort of a bluish green teal color with uh, highlights and accents, all kinds of different colors, sometimes pink, yellow, purple, blue, red, uh, just whatever he felt like doing. So the Jack Nisi ones had a lot of different paint jobs uh, on them and again it was called Deadly Commander. So um, the, the Don Post one also tended to have a little, leaned a little more towards the brown uh, and was a little lighter in color and the Distortions uh, model which came later leaned a little more towards blue. I'm not saying it was blue, it wasn't. It's just like here's the meter, like here's brown, here's blue, okay distortions, eh, a little bluer, you know, dog post, eh, a little browner. See what I'm saying? And um, what was I talking about? Oh yes, the Singenor. Uh Other than that, pretty similar. Uh, the Don Post one tended to be a bit lighter too. And the the, uh, the distortions one a little more on the dark side. And uh, well, that's that's pretty much it on the distortion Singenor. Again, uh, a classic from the late 80s from original movie molds from a very, very cool monster. I recommend you look for one and I also recommend uh, if you can I also recommend you get one from trick-or-treat because it's the same it's pretty much the same deal you know so uh, that's all for now and uh, remember in spite of what agent Mulder would have you think uh, recent reports indicate that the truth isn't even out there